So one thing that I like about you, Brad, is you said I'm going to make software to help people, obviously, with their training. But I found that most of your content, most of your business time and energy and where you speak and where you spend your time and network is with a lot of high level businesses and owners and things like that as more of kind of the sales and business coach. Um, what, what advice, you know, let's, let's go to the business level, you know, speaking of doubling your, your sales and, 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 and growing your business, what are some of the common pitfalls you found in some of these direct sales companies, you know, that you commonly see, like, what are, what are some of the big pitfalls? And then your big aha, like do this, change these things. And this would help double your company because you've obviously helped a lot of businesses. Yeah, but I mean, dude, it's going to go back to training. Train your damn people properly. Train your people and focus on your training, and I guarantee you, your results will go up, your brain damage will go down, and you will thank me later. But most people think all of the money they pour into training, they can't really feel. It's not really tangible. They can't really feel the effect. Well, that's because they're not training their people. They're exposing their people. It'd be like going to the doctor to get a shot of penicillin, and he just squirts it next to your arm. You know, that's not, that didn't work, bro. Like it, the medicine works, but you got to administer it correctly. So if I'm out there and, and, and I'm thinking, how do I, you know, increase my business? Dude, train your damn salespeople to work harder, work smarter, work longer, ask better questions, build better relationships, you know, know your product and inventory better, know your core values better, you know, understand mindset, you know, like, like develop your people, even if, well, well you know, what if they leave? Dude. What if you don't develop them and they stay? That's that's a good point. Yeah, like people say training is expensive. Try not training. That's expensive. I love that. Okay, so let's say that I don't have a skill problem. My guys are super trained. Now I have a will problem. They just don't seem to go take, like talented as hell, but they don't work. Then you now have we're bad people. Okay, because that's what I was going to say, because you've probably seen that in a lot of sales industries. It's like, these guys are all sharp and I've been spending time and energy. They're going through the trainings. These guys read all the books. They go to the conferences, but I can't seem to get them to work. Is there any good strategies that you found to help motivate direct sales, 1099, you know, commission only type salespeople, other than just like give them more training? What do you do to kind of motivate them? Any, any good practices there? Mainly just, you know, build a strong culture where, where, where there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of camaraderie. You know, there's a lot of pride. You got to build a culture of, 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 of competition almost where, where like, you know, people are off when they want to be off their 1099, but they don't. Why? Cause they need to, they need to stay, stay up the boards, man. Like the whole, well, again, another thing, like how often do you communicate with your team? A lot of these teams are out in the field now, right? So how do you communicate with them? How do you motivate them? How do you lead them? How do you fire them up? How do you incentivize them? You know, what's the culture like? I'd look at your culture. What do, do you found? Do you find that there's any like key, like things that companies do, or or examples of companies that you've interacted with that have been really cool culture contributors that like helped build a better culture, or like do you have a story or an example of where you've seen companies shift their culture from maybe kind of a yeah we're kind of moseying along and then, you know it's not performing, and then all of a sudden they implement something or they shifted something or they changed this. Yeah, any examples of that? Yeah, usually they change their leadership. Love that. Yeah, speed of the boss, speed of the troops, nine times out of ten. You know, you got a lazy ass boss, you'll probably have a lazy ass team. So what how do you go find good leaders in this business? Let's talk about recruiting. I don't find them, I develop them. I've got a training system that produces some high-powered, high caliber, some guns. I love that. How many times do you, I, I would be a very rich man for, for if I got a, if I got a nickel for how many times people have hit me up and they're like, Sam, can you just find me like a good leader? I just need somebody to like manage all the door ninjas and, you know, make sure that they're doing it. And I'm like, there's your problem. You know what I mean? They're, 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 they're thinking that they're going to go find some golden goose off the street. And I'm like, A's recruit A's. And if you're not an A, the problem is, is your people aren't working because you're not working how you're supposed to be working. And yeah, if you're trying to attract the A's and you're losing them as fast as you're attracting them, then you become an A-hole. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, no, I just think so many people, they, 
they need to look in the mirror from the leadership. And I think that they're asking for a fictional fairy tale when they're like, I just need better people. And I'm like, no, you just need to, be, you have good people. You just need to become a better leader to lead those people. And I think that's where people that just because they're a good sales rep, they got put in a management position and they didn't spend time getting coached and, and trained and focused and going through a system to become that leader that's going to be able to motivate and inspire and drive competition and fuel those fuel those kind of fires under everybody um, to have the culture that they're asking for. And, you know, it's sometimes a hard conversation when I'm out consulting to like say that to somebody, but it's like I'm disser- I'm not doing them a service by like holding back. So then some clients are like, wow, that was harsh. I was like, I'm just just being honest, like, like I need to help you, not your people, because I guarantee like when I came to your office or when I look at your people, I'm like, dude, if I had this team, we'd be doing five times more like the same dudes, like you have sharp people, but I I need to help you, dude. And I, and I think that's more so a common conversation. And, you know, if you're, are there any good like leadership development or leadership books or podcasts or trainings that you've seen or recommend that have helped some of those leaders that you're like, man, I have a leader. He's kind of a dud. How do I develop him to be better? I don't want to necessarily get rid of him right now. How do, have you seen any good recommendations or have any? Well, Jocko Willink wrote a book called extreme leadership. That's a good book. Ray Dalio principles is a great book, but you know, I, I tend to try to tell people to look inward, like go, go get the four agreements. You know, go get books that'll make you a better person. You want a better team, become a better person. You know, you'll attract better people. You know, what you get, you tolerate. So if you tell me you have a bad team, you know, Jocko Willink taught me one day, there are no bad teams, only bad leaders. And I used to, and I used to really disagree with that. Why? Because like, you know, I had a bad team before and it's like, I didn't understand what they meant. Like, I'm a good leader, but this, these guys suck. They just suck. You know, and then when I really fi- figured out what they meant, they were right. You're the bad leader. Why? If you allow someone to remain on your team that's truly incapable of, of, of carrying the ball, you're the problem, not yeah. the person that can't carry the ball. You're the problem for allowing that person to remain on the team. So instantly when you have a bad team, let's say that is true. Yeah. Well, you're instantly a bad leader if you will if you admit that because you're allowing the team to be bad by letting the bad people remain which costs you eight players then you become an a-hole yeah no it's funny I, I was out in Oklahoma to put this into context with this roofing company and he's like dude I just can't seem to get a good manager and I just can't seem to attract like a players and 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 he's like I was like well the problem is I show up to your team and most of your people look like they came out of like con like their ex-convicts he's like well they are i was like what he's like yeah we call ourselves the misfits and i go well the problem is is by you allowing a bunch of c players on this team right here and a bunch of them are just like charity cases if an a player walks in the room and you're you're not prepared for that a player he's going to walk right out of that room because all he sees is he's like i don't want to play in the c league i want to play in the a league and I'm like, but you're an A player, dude. Like, I'm like, you're a good dude. The problem is you just have too big of a heart that you're putting on all these charity cases. But really that's, that's like repelling what you're asking for. And I was like, you need to trim some of this fat. You need to clean it up. I would shrink your company a little bit. Pick your A players that, or B players that you can turn into A players. And let's start getting, filling it with some more sharp looking cats that aren't sitting there like getting higher and showing up like, smelling like a bum because they didn't like sleep in a, a house last night. Like, you know, let, me, let me ask you a question. That's called a lack of leadership. Accountability. Leadership. Oh, accountability. That's a lack of accountability. That, that company is lacking accountability. So if you need good content, repetition, practice, and accountability, they don't have that. Okay. Like I said, you're pretty screwed if you don't have that. See, Sam, here at Lightspeed, I go by three T's. And our disciplinary policy is the three T's. I say I train, tolerate, or terminate. Mm. Which one one do you choose? You want to train, tolerate, or terminate? And we don't tolerate. If you're listening, he just... So you want to train or terminate? Because (laughs) I say it just like that to every employee here. Guys, if anything goes wrong, I'm as fair as they come. I train, tolerate, or terminate, and we don't tolerate. 
So he so drops his he drops his pointer finger. So if you're just listening, he dropped his pointer finger. He kept his thumb and his middle finger up, and so you can imagine the visual there. And uh, <laughs> so you either train or terminate. Like it's not an option to get better at light speed. Like folks, if you want to work at light speed, you do not have an option to get better. I don't care if you got a first place ribbon and everything you've done since you were 12. I don't care if you have a degree. I don't care if you have a record. I don't care what you look like. I don't care what kind of cereal you eat. And I don't care who your parents were. What I care about is that you have a desire to improve. If you do not, well, then you don't get to work here. Love that. It's simple. That. Now, most people will not take that stance. And that's the problem with most companies. And, and if they could correct that, they would immediately make improvement. And that does mean going backwards sometimes. Like, dude, you might have, you know, 44 people where, where, where 18 really shouldn't be there. Well, you'd be a much stronger company if you got rid of 18 cancers and, and, yeah. and, and, and remained with the strong people and yeah. start to attract more strong people or they don't get to show up. So dude, I, you got to ask yourself a question. Do I want to do it or do I not want to do it? And if the answer is yes, I want to build my company. Yes, I want to grow. Okay, well, then you're going to need people and you better have a system to train them and educate them and hold them accountable and keep them practiced. You can do it manually or you can do it virtually, but you better do it. And manually is way more expensive and 10 times harder and, and you can't even scale it. So I would highly recommend that you do it virtually. Now, how do you do that? You get someone like Sam with their D2D university. You issue passwords and use usernames and passwords to your team. You, you set your expectations. You track and measure that they do them. And what you will see is nothing short of amazing. Two months later, everyone will be more up to speed. Everyone will be more motivated. Everyone will be better. Everyone will be making more money. You'll be making more sales. Like You'll be like, holy crap. It's, it's I unbelievable. Like, I guess Everybody. training works. Well, yeah, training works if you do it right. I love that. 